What's up, dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? It is I, your plant madam, Rachel. Welcome to my updated bedroom plant tour. I guess you could say that my bedroom is a bit of an urban jungle. If you like plant tours with over 150 plants in one room, be sure and like this video. And if you aren't already a part of our Dirty Plant Ho family, be sure and subscribe. I think I'm pretty much stacked on all the plants that I can have, so this is pretty much it until I rotate some things out. My husband is behind the camera filming. Hello. And he gets an A for effort no matter what happens today. If things don't turn out okay, that's okay. It's his fault. This right here is my begonia that I've had for quite some time. It's a really beautiful begonia and it's been getting these teeny tiny little cute petite leaves ever since its only light source has just been this LED strip. Then right next door we have a Pothos Enjoy and I picked that up from uh, Gabriella Plants right there. Right here we have a Silvery Ann Scandapsis Pictus, one of my favorites for sure. Right next door to that is my Monstera Stiltipicana. It's very dusty. Hartley Philodendron Lemon Lime, and it is one of my favorites because the leaves come out all orange and lemon, lemon limey and blushy. It's really pretty. Little pot right here that it's in is super freaking cute, and I got that at Westwood Gardens as well, so that's really cute. I love that. It's one of my favorites. Right here is one of the mature forms of the philodendron Campos portuanum. I think I'm saying it right. I may have been saying it wrong for a full year, but who knows? So this is my Anthurium warocuanum and or warock. This is the leaf that I'm most proud of here. And even it has a little bit of a busted edge on it. And my newest leaf right here also has a busted edge here. The velvetiness is uh, uncomparable though. And you ask yourself, well, Rachel, why do you have it outside of a tent? Why do you have it just free floating? That's because it's so freaking big now. I don't know what else to do with it. Like, where am I supposed to put it? It won't fit in this tent. It won't fit in the other tent. I don't know where to put it, so. Here it is, and it hasn't completely crisped up on me yet, so, so far, so good. This right here is my Marble Queen Pothos. I actually tried to tape it to the wall, and it fell. But it's actually a lot taller than that. You see where my tape just fell off the wall? I have the little clips, the plastic clips, but I couldn't find them, and I was cleaning my room, and I really wanted it to be on the wall, but that was a failure. Right next door to that, we have my makeshift indoor greenhouse. So hanging up in the very back is my Anthurium Ace of Spades, and it's actually hanging on macrame inside of this tent because the leaves hang so low at this point and it's so big that that's the only thing I can figure I can do with it. This Anthurium Pedatum right here that uh, Oops I Soiled My Plants sent to me. It's been really struggling. Can't seem to get it to put off more than one little leaf and it's just like, oh, it's really, really sad. This Melanochrysum right here you can see has put putting me through all kinds of hell. Look at that, look at that, <laughs> can you see? This completely broke itself. I don't know. I thought it was doing so good too. It had, it was starting to get such really long leaves and then it always is pulling some crap. This right here is my other Warrock Weanum. This is the one that Cody sent to me many, many moons ago. This is my Monstera Aurea that I got from New Life Tropicals and the growth on it that it put out was not variegated so i cut it back and it's got two growth points coming in right there so that's really nice right next door to that we have my piper ornatum and this is one that i got from steve's leaves is an amazing find you can see how some of the tips i've had my nails on for four weeks so give me a break i know they look bad but some of these tips got really crispy because it really does not like to get dry Word to the wise, these want to stay moist. And you can see this vine goes all the way down here. These beautiful 
ornate looking little pink leaves over here. Isn't that pretty? That is some really intense pink. No, it's Magnificum X Crystallinum. This is my Anthurium Red Crystallinum. Let me turn it around where you can actually see. See what that guy looks like? Very, very red from NSC Tropicals. One of my most sacred plants there. Then right, ha right here we have our Philodendron Burlmark's Fantasy. And it's always putting out really funky leaves, much like its stepbrother, the Melanocrysum. I can't remember what this one's called. It's an anthurium. Yeah, it's an anthurium <laughs> something. It's a, it's a two, two, one, four, six, because I, I don't even think they sent me this one with a label from Equigenera. It was like one of those ones I ordered and then they were like, mm, we're not sure either. If you go up high up here at the very top, I've had this Marble Queen for, I think a couple of years now. The vine on it actually goes all the way down to the floor and comes out right here. So it's been growing here for a really, really long time. The, the leaves are really beautiful on it as well. It's a really cool plant. Just a regular heart leaf philodendron right here that's all surrounded all of these plants. It comes down all over the front. There's actually a little vine that's actually coming through in the back there as well. This right over here is a neon pothos and it also trails down really far. These plants have been here for a really long time. Down here at the bottom, we have a Anthurium magnificum and this is its latest leaf right here. It's really, really big. And then you can see my struggling begonia beefsteak right there it get this likes more light than being in the dark around the tv with just an led strip did you know that i did not now know you that. do um it really needs more light than that so i went ahead and put it back underneath the tent this is or underneath this light this is a philodendron ornatum i just took a top cutting off of that for one of my last purges of the year this is an Anthurium flavolinianum, and this one has been really, really, is that a flower or is that a leaf? What a trip, I can't even tell. That sure don't look like, that sure don't look like a leaf. I think that may be flowering right here. Can you see it? No. So I'm pretty sure that my, I'm sorry, I'm trying to be still, it's like almost impossible. Okay. Anthurium flavolinianum, and I think that that one is blooming, which is pretty cool. I really like the way this looks. It's it's really, really neat looking Anthurium. It grows very different than a lot of the other ones. Then this last big giant boy right here is my Anthurium metallicum. And it seemed like it put out three leaves all at once, bang, 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 after not growing for a really long time. And then it kind of just stopped. So I'm guessing this guy probably needs to be repotted and I may not mess with him until summertime. My Anthurium regal, it put out this one big giant leaf and all of the leaves on these Anthuriums, they just want to satellite straight up. So it's kind of, which, you know, I guess that's a reflection of the light and where it's coming from, but at the same time, a lot of my Anthurium do that. So you can also see that it's putting out um, the starting of a new leaf down here. I'm not gonna, huh? About time. Yeah, really. I'm not gonna get into the begonia bubbles because we already did a pretty big video on the begonia bubbles. But this right here is a Monstera lechleriana, and when it gets to its full mature maturity, it actually starts developing little holes along the midrib, like a lot of other Monstera. So we're working on it. I probably just lost all my <laughs> work there at the very top without a high enough pole. This right here is my El Chaco Red. This is one of my newest leaves right here after cutting off the entire top, propagating it and selling it in my purge group. And this right here is the new leaf that it's putting off. Can you even see that? Mm -hmm. That's that hot pink lipstick looking new petiole forming. Begonia brachilii silver edge. Down there in the back corner is the begonia rocky eye. This one right here is my begonia 
Lubergerii, Lubergerii, and it's got a beautiful little white bloom on it right there. Then we have my green Chlorosticta right here. Beautiful. It's been growing for quite some time. This is my big giant Begonia Amphioxus. It goes all the way back here to the back of the tank. Really, really loves it in this tank right here. My Begonia Chlorosticta red form. It's actually gotten really, really gangly with all the propagation cuttings that I've taken of it, but we're working on it. I cannot remember the name of this Begonia right here. I want to say Xerographica. I don't think that's right. I'm not sure. Arach it's not Arachnoidea because that's another one. Anyways, this one's a really, really cool begonia. I've lost the tag. That sucks. This one right here is struggling and that's why I put it in here. It wasn't in here before. It's called Begonia Taiwaniana. Seems to want a lot more moisture and humidity. When you see your begonia start to do this with these crispy stems or crispy uh, leaves and you see the little baby leaves start to die off, then you know that you've got oh, most likely a humidity problem. This is Begonia U614. I got it from Steve's Leaves and it looked a little rough for the wear, but it's picked up a lot since it's come from the nursery. So right here is my regular Skindapsis, Skindapsis Pictus, just regular old one. And I've got a Meekins that's actually going all the way up to the top here, looking beautiful with its sparkly green leaves. Casey told me today, did you realize these leaves sparkle? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do know these leaves sparkle. They're beautiful, aren't they? I discovered <laughs> Then uh, right next door, I've got this big, beautiful uh, Mandulopothos. I've taken lots of cuttings of it. I really, really love the variegation on it. It's absolutely beautiful. Right next to that is a Calathea. I think it's called Freddy and I'm mad at it and I don't care if it gets light or not. So that's why it's up here. So right here I have my regular string of hearts. Back here I have my jewel orchid. It's put off two different uh, stem portions back there. This is Begonia villifolia and I'm just really having a hell of a hard time with it. I can't get it to do nothing. I'm about to stick it in a terrarium and just be done with it because I'm over it. Begonia autumn ember. Really, really beautiful begonia. This is Begonia Pustulata, and it saw, has seen better days because I forgot to water it for a few days, so it was looking really, really crispy. You want to get, you can see. This is what a really nice Begonia Pustulata leaf should look like. Not like this. Like this. Right here we have Begonia Candy Stripe, and it is freaking gorgeous. Very, very dark red um, variegation in bright light. And then you take away this much bright light and it kind of tones it down to more of a white and gray and pink variegation. Then we have Begonia Cleopatra. You can't see it super, super well, but it really likes this little jar that's in. A couple of pitcher plants back there, but I won't pull them out because there's a lot of water standing in the dish. It's Begonia Iron Cross. It's a real beauty. This is the Flame Violet Epicia that I still haven't taken out of the bag and it's blowing, growing beautifully. Isn't that cool looking? The fuzzy Epicia. This is one of my more expensive begonias, Begonia Masacato. Yeah, Masacato. Really, really, really pretty variegation. Silver, black velvet. See the little baby leaves are so pretty. Then we have some variegated strings of heart right here. We have a couple of variegated syngoniums that came from Mrs. Harley G back here. They're actually growing quite well. I have a black ZZ plant that is slowly dying. can't remember what this one was called. Um, damn, where? Oh, it is a begonia, but it's like, where do all the tags go? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, to see how good you are. I don't pick them out and just, you know, it doesn't say uh, unknown begonia. This right here is begonia erectocarpa. We're not going to go through all of the, the domes. We're just going to kind of skip the domes for today. Back here is begonia Steve's leaves yellow jacket. 
very gorgeous Rex begonia. Then we have Begonia Tiger Paw sent from Mrs. Plantastica. This one is from Houseplant Heather and it's already starting to get really big and she knew I liked that shape of leaf. That's probably why she sent that one to me. And we'll skip the domes because no one likes the domes. This cute little Begonia right here. Begonia who the F knows sent to me by Plantastica. And she sent me this retro mug, mug that it was already planted in. Very cute. She knows me very well. This one is Begonia Padat Padat Pad oh, Padatifida, oh. <laughs> and it's really it's also got that very palmate leaf shape. Very very pretty. I have my Maranta Silver Stripe, and this thing is such a pain in the butt to grow and propagate. So if you get one, be sure and get one with uh, more than one or two nodes because you're gonna need them because it's very difficult to propagate. I think this one's called a uh, Macoyana something. I might be tripping though. I can't be, I can't be sure. On the next level down is my Alocasia Black Velvet. It has been a very easy growing Alocasia and I haven't had a ton of pest problems with it. That one is the Ice Dancer African Violet, the variegated African Violet. Very, very cute. Right next door to that, we have the Philodendron Birkin, just now starting to get the cute variegation. Right next to them we have the Begonia Rex Mother of Pearl from Steve's Leaves and this is definitely one of my favorites. I love the sparkly shiny pearlescent variegation. That is the Monstera Aurea top cutting from New Life Tropicals that did not push out any variegation so I went ahead and trimmed it off. Back in the back is another Begonia Iron Cross and I'm not sure what that Begonia neighbor of it is called. These two Begonias in the the back I'm not quite sure what the name of them are the one in the very back is the one that suffered with the mealybugs outbreak and had to be treated and there's only like two little tiny babies leaves left <laughs> and the one next to it is I don't even know I've just had it forever from a local nursery and we have a variegated Trandiscantia and I just got it from Lowe's and it looks beautiful but if you try to pick anything off of it to propagate it, it just looks like a gangly stick and it's not very pretty. So I'm kind of trying to wait for it to fill out a little bit before I start propagating. Right there is my Global Green Pothos that's all staked up. And I got that from Cody quite a while ago and it's grown quite a bit. Then the rest of everything else that's down here on the bottom shelf is mostly begonia bubbles. So we will skip over to the fish tank and then the other side of the bedroom. So here is my little bedside aquarium that is Lazarus, our goldfish right there. He had a buddy in there but he passed away sadly of an unknown virus. This up here is the philodendron Brazil that never grew at all until Casey installed this light up here because we had a varicosum and it finally grew. That was very pleasant. This was one of the plants where I didn't understand what light was for a really long time and it just didn't grow at all. Didn't die, but it just didn't grow either. Right underneath that is a, another neon pothos uh, propagation off of the first one and it also goes all the way down to the ground. If you are a fire marshal or married to one, do not show them this video. I'm a fire marshal. <laughs> <laughs> so this right here is my philodendron esmeraldense. And you can see it's sat up here about waist high onto one of my dressers. And it goes all the way up this bamboo pole, higher than I can reach. The new leaves actually are starting to bow out a lot on the top. See, this one was like a much more slender all the way down, very straight. And this one became very, you know, like the dinosaur off of Jurassic Park that spits the venom type of shape at the top. So, and this is the new leaf coming back out here. It's gigantic. It's huge. Oh, someone wanted to see a thumb test on the stem. So that's my thumb and that's the stem. It's real big. That's as big as your thumb. Uh, growing on it, I also have it kind of stuck in the same pot is this philodendron patriciae. Patriciae? Not patriciae. 
Chironier. Patricia is much more expensive. I don't know what I was thinking. Right here growing yeah, kind of on it is this philodendron Chironier. And I just kind of have the pot sitting in the pot. I also have this philodendron panadifolium just kind of sitting in the same pot. You know, you kind of start doing that. You just kind of start sitting stuff inside of other stuff because you know, you don't have room for anything. And plus the runoff from this one waters the one underneath it. Right here, I have a Anthurium lineolatum. Beautiful new leaf there that I haven't gotten a chance to completely screw up yet. I have a Mamii propagation that would not put off any leaf or put off any roots whatsoever until I put this cup into a tote and then all of a sudden it started acting right. I pulled it out because I thought about selling it and then I changed mine and didn't do it. This is a Begonia Luxuriens. This is a new one that I got from Mountain Orchids. My other one is teeny, teeny, tiny, uh, but this one came in a much bigger pot. This is the biggest pot I've ever gotten from Mountain Orchids, so I was pretty excited about it, but beautiful, stunning, stunning Begonia. One of the coolest leaf shapes and patterns I've ever seen. Probably my favorite Begonia right now at the moment. This is my big Mama albi Albino. <laughs> <gasps> oh shit. Did you just break it? No, it's the sound of this uh, papery brown stuff. Talk about the root going into the wall. I'm going to. So this is my Monstera Albo and I've cut off of it before and this is all the new growth. This leaf and the two leaves above it. You were pointing at the one below it. If you want to grow really smart, then you just let it grow into your drywall and skip the pole because that way it'll just rip your paint off and everything when you move. So, so that's all the way on the wall solid. That's solid on the wall. If I grab my plant, it is on the wall. It ain't coming off. I have no idea how I'm gonna repot it. It's a real issue. There's cobwebs on it. It's become a part of the, <sighs> it's become a part of the whole room. You know what I mean? This is an Anthurium, I can't even tell you the name of. I got it from Equigenera and it was like busted as hell. So I cut it up and I'm like experimenting with propagating Anthuriums. Chopped it right off of its little stem there and this gnarly pink root started coming out. So Anthurium propagation video coming soon. It's not as hard as it seems. This is my Metanilla. Apoensis, and I'm so freaking sad that you guys do not see the fully developed blooms come out yet. Me too. Like, I want to see them tonight, but I wish you guys could have saw them because they're going to be freaking gorgeous. And you can see that Metanilla is also like to be watered, like pretty regular. <laughs> we're not, we're not fully broken up yet, but it's definitely not liking me a lot. We're going to skip that begonia bubble. This is Begonia Taconite, and it probably needs to be in a terrarium because this is how it's behaving. The brown crispiness, the transparency, that needs a, it needs a bubble. It don't like the 5% drop in humidity. So it was borderline before It's it borderline it. before it, and now it's just, it's had enough. This is an Anthurium bilatus. Bolatus, ooh, bitch, I was right. This is Anthurium Bolatus, one of my favorite Anthuriums right now. I love the weird clown shoe, weird it type of shape. It's really neat, ready? Yeah, I'm sucking in. <laughs> <laughs> These two right here are my Wally Grow plant hangers that I really love from Wally Grow and they have my Cissus adenopoda, which is also showing a little bit of underwatering stress. But if you look up, and this is my husband in the mirror right here. <laughs> and this is a purple one from Wally Grow as well. So they offer lots of colors. And this one has not been as damaged by my underwatering, but you can see how beautiful this is. It goes all the way up my lighting. It's hard to see in the camera. I get it. Look at the one that trails along the wall. Yeah. Don't, don't go into the light, Carol Ann. 
Yeah, I got it. You see this one? It, it goes all the way across there. It binds itself. If I hang a couple of those little clear um, hooks into the wall, it will hook into there no problem. It'll actually probably go wherever we want it to go. Thank you guys so much for coming and looking at my updated bedroom plant tour. Not a whole, whole lot has changed, but I think that we're on a consistent merry-go-round with plants so some things may be familiar and some things may not have been so familiar if you're looking for information on a specific plant leave the timestamp down below in the comment section and i will try to get back with you and give you the plant name spelling so that you can find that plant for yourself if you haven't already liked this video be sure and give it a big thumbs up if you're watering your plants and you need a podcast to listen to hit up our sister station heart shape leaves after dark i also have a third channel called Rachel's so-called life if you like nails and hair dye and shopping and I don't know just random other stupid stuff then you can go and subscribe to that channel because it will also be linked down below peace out later taters bye And now I would like to give a big, huge shout out to all of my monthly supporters, my dirty plant enthusiasts, Abby Gilbert, Ace Cadet, Alexandra Chilton, Alexis Solly, Always Propagating, Amber V, Amy Adwan, Amy Powell, Andrea Drews, Anna Dreesen, Annika Berman, April Steer, Ashley Caraveo, A Warm Wind, Barbara Lindberg, Bryn, Carl Jr., Carly Grinnell, Casey Dillon, Cass with Plants, Camomile Camille, Charlotta R, Chris Felice, Chrissy Spencer, Colleen Hatton, Courtney Courtney Martin, Crazy Plant Lady, Danielle, Daniel Holt, Darren Hubble, Daryl Lee, David Sawyer, Diana Anderson, Eliza Haney, Elizabeth Gracieful, Ellen Louise Pasco, Emma Castle, Evie, Felicia Yeager, Fenner Lamb, Fiona, Goncalo Martins, Gretchen Ward, Haley Hetrick, Haley Martin, Haley Kester, Heather Summers, Heidi Christofferson, Hells Bells, Holy Coley, House Planty Goodness, Isabella H., Jamie Ellis, Jake Rowe, Jasmine Renee, Jaya Rowe, Jedi KCC, Jenna Maria, Jennifer Banner, Jessica Viola, Jessica D, Joe Howard, John Alexander, Joseph L. Simmons V, Caitlin Card, Cassandra Hines, Caitlin Harvey, Kathy Walters, Kathy W, Kaylee Logan, Keith Betchel, Kelly Hodgson, Kim Toby, Kimberly Mossman, Not Dude, Christy Bim, Crystal Wang, Kaya Hauser, Lauren Loves Leaves, Life's a Garden, Light Owl, Lillian Morin, Lily Rose, Lynn Therese, Lisa Nolan, Liz B, Lori Davidson Hughes, Lulu's Leaves, Mara Baker, Bear Mar, Megan Moyna, Medusa Smith, Meeks, Megan Lilly, Mev H, MF Webb, Mia Sue, Michael Hart, Michelle A, Michelle Reed, Michelle Waters, Monica Allison, Morgan Cluck, Mortessa, My Clean Leaves, Nadine Guzman, Nesta Humphreys, Nicholas Constant, Nicole Rohrer, Nikki Toller, Peanuts Plants, Rachel Sharp, Braylene Hillhouse, Ricky Mulbeck, Reese's Roots, Robin, Safia Bahadir, Samantha Duparity, Sarah, Seth Miller, Shell 91, Showers ASMR, Sophia Rogers, Sophie Bodding, Steph Miller, Steph W, Stephanie Bazella, Stephanie Pietro, Tanya Hautsager, Taylor Kaysen, P, The Zen Den, Tiffany Wright, Tug the Toss, Turquoise Fibers and Foliage, Tyler Percy, Vertigree Dreams, Vernie Zhu, Victoria Fonseca, and Wesley Lamentino. And now a big dirty nasty shout out to all of my dirty plant hoes. Best of the best of the best, sir. With honor, Danny Ryan, Seven Puggies, Cindy C, Alana Treese, Allie Wells, Allison Havens, Amber Mae Fleming, Amber Beth, Amy Walton, Amy Baxter, Amy Hatch, Andrew Wolf, Andrea Hewitt, Anna D, April Robinson, Arlisa B, Ashley Williams, Aubrey Puff, Autumn, Botanical Bex, Botanicaz, LLC, C. Woe, Caitlin Phillips, Celia Stuffin Things, Chelsea Clifton, Cheyenne Burnett, Christy Stewart, Sierra Jones, Colin F, Danny Sprague, Deanne Santos, Carolyn Music, Denise Tomer, Diana Warner, Donna Ratcliffe, Eliza Beast Co., Emily Cephalu, Emily Forhey, Emma Wiley, Florence Ramirez, Gab, Gina the Great, Gingerly Life, Haley Evelyn, Haley Stanley, Heather Lamb, Heather Worrell, Honeybird, Houseplant Heather, Houseplants and Hip Hop, Linda Rayha, Jennifer Rouse, Jenny Vanderbilt, Jessica F., Jessica Stanford, Jill C., Jordan Delaney, Juan Z. C., Justin Hartley, Caitlin Guavi, Karen Longstreth, Carissa, oh, Carla Diaz, Catherine Sproles, Katie, Katrin, Kelly Rice, Kelly Costello, Kiri Kelly, 
Chrissy D, Lauren SJI, Lara Juno, Lindsay Daniel, Maggie Quarter, Mary Boots, Mark Straw, Megan Earls, Megan Gowdy, Melissa Hartog, Mel's Planty Plants, Michaela Rags, Michelle G, Miss Angle Green, My Soil Planties, Natural State Ashley, Nicholas Caruso, Nicole McCaw, Nikki Grilly, Auto Avocado Tree, Olivia Wise, Paul Zhang, Pete B, Phoebe DeBover, Plant Princess, Plantastica, Simonetta, QR, Reagan Cornelius, Real Estate Tolta, Rhiannon C, Rhiann Chuck is saying, Rico 9383, Riley Elizabeth, Wren, Root and Leaf, Sammy Joe Ruby, Sarah G, Sarah J, Sarah Jones, Sasha Rujo, Spotted Oreo 10, Stacey Anderson, Tara Peterson, Terrace Plants, Tropics in the Midwest, The Fiber Circus, The Hatter's Madness, The Plant Channel, The Plants Meow, The Turtle, Tracy Buzzle, Tyler Frakes, Victoria Feltenberger, Whitney Eaton, Wicked Witch Roxy, Will H, and Winter Rose. We will catch you on the flip side. Peace out. Later, Tater. Bye. Mm -hmm.